In this video, I'll be introducing measure theory. So, first of all, what is a measure? We'll say we have a set, I'll call it x, okay? And in this set, I have a subset, okay? I have a subset right here. I'll call it y, okay? So now, mu of y, okay, mu of y, this means measure, measure, okay? So the measure of y is just the size of y, right? It's just the size of whatever that set is. That's the intuition behind a measure. So, for example, if we were to take R2, two-dimensional space, right? And I had a box. Let's say A by B, right? The measure, I'll call this box B, the measure of this box B would be B times A, right? That's what you'd expect, okay? And another thing you'd expect is that if I had a circle, if I had a circle, center there, radius R, you'd expect, I'll call this circle C, you'd expect the measure of that circle be pi r squared, right? Now that there's some other things you'd expect from this, that if I had a set with nothing in it, usually denote that like that, okay? Just a little circle with a cross through it, you'd expect that to be zero. And if I were to combine these two sets, the box and the circle, that their areas would just add. Okay, so that means that mu of A union B, okay, A union B basically means combine the sets, is mu of A plus mu of B, okay, as long as they're disjoint, basically meaning their intersection is empty. They don't intersect. Okay, now another thing you'd expect is that if I had a subset of this circle that have a smaller measure. So the mu, um, if A is a subset of B, mu of A is less than or equal to mu of B. Okay? And this is how we base our measures, these facts. Okay? So again, we had a couple things that were given, given sigma, I'll call it cap, uh, given x a, a space, a space, or a set. Okay, given this space, uh, and sigma, a collection, a collection of subsets. This uh, will denote it like this. Okay, so that means that the set of all subsets, sigma, is a subset of that. A measure is a measure mu is a mapping that takes in things from sigma and it outputs things that are either r, like a real number, or it can also be infinite, right? Because the real line, right? The measure of the entire real line is infinity, right? And so we need that requirement. 
has the properties that we discussed before. One, um, mu of the empty set is zero, okay? Two, mu, um, if A is a subset of B, mu of A is less than or equal to mu B, okay? Number three, um, um, if U I or E I, I'll call it E I, if all of these are in sigma, okay, for I, I, one, two, all the way up until infinity. Then the measure of the um it, sorry there's another condition and um they are uh they are each dish and e i intersect e j equals the empty set. 4i not equal to j, okay, they're disjoint, uh, then the measure of their union of all of them together is going to be the sum of the measures, okay? And that's it. These are the conditions we have for our measure. And so, the most basic one is called the Lebesgue measure. Okay? And what it is, is we say that the Lebesgue measure, I'll denote it capital cursive L, the Lebesgue measure of a set A in R, in R, in R is going to be the smallest possible value for the sum of intervals, okay? For the sum of the lengths of intervals such that the union of IK Uh, contains a. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to do the line segment like this, I could cover it with open intervals like this, okay? I could cover it with open intervals like that. So that's an open interval, that's an open interval, that's an open interval right there, okay? And what I'm looking at is how small could this ever possibly get? Okay. How tiny could the sum of the lengths of each of these intervals? Uh, so, like, if an interval is A to B, then the length of that interval is going to be B minus A. Okay. That's how we're going to define it. Okay. What's the possible... What is the smallest possible value for this, okay? That's what this means. So it's the smallest possible sum of all of these lengths, okay? And so we'll go more in depth later.